Hello Grade 10s and welcome to today's lesson on the linear function. In a moment we will be joining Eloise who will share important information on linear functions with us. Remember to keep your notebooks open to copy new definitions or formulas. Are you ready to do a problem? I'm going to give you a number, then I'm going to give you a rule. I want you to apply the rule to the number. The number is negative 1. And the rule is multiply the number by 2 and subtract 3 from it. Okay, so the number negative 1 is multiplied by 2. This gives us negative 2. Subtract 3 from this and it gives us negative 5. Pretty easy, hey? Great! Now let's have a closer look at what you did. The number that we start with, we'll call the x value. Once we have applied the rule, we get a solution which we'll call the y value. In the example you just did, negative 1 was your x value. You did a calculation using the rule. The solution of negative 5 that you got in the end gave you your y value. We can put these values into a table of values like this. Now, if I give you two more x values, can you work out what y values they will have? Sure. Bring it on. Use x equals 1 and x equals 3. Okay, so 1 multiplied by 2 gives us 2. Subtract 3 from this and it gives us minus 1. And this one, 3 multiplied by 2 gives us 6. Subtract 3 from this and it's 3. Well done! Now let's see if you can take this one step further. So far, I've given you the x values. Have a look at the values in the table so far. Can you predict what the next x and y values will be? Hmm, let's see. Oh, I see, there is a pattern. As the x's go up by 2, the y's go up by 4. So 2 up from 3 is 5, and 4 up from 3 is 7. You are probably right, but let's check this by applying the rule. So applying the rule to an x value of 5, I get 5 times 2 is 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. So the y value is 7. So each x value has a y value that is related to it. We can represent each x value with its y value as a point on the Cartesian plane. Have a look here. Here is our Cartesian plane with the x-axis here, the y-axis here, and the point 0, 0 where the axes meet. The point negative 1, negative 5 is here with x negative 1 and y negative 5. We can label this point with its coordinates like this. Negative 1, semicolon, negative 5 in brackets. Here x is 1 and y is negative 1. This point here has x equal to 3 and y equal to 3. Then 5, 7 is this point here. These points seem to be in line with one another. They lie on a straight line. Exactly! And this lesson is about straight line graphs. Now if you found the x and y values of all these points in between year and year, year and year and year and year, you would find that they all fit the same rule I gave you. But that's going to take like forever. I'd be your age by the time I'm finished. <laughs> Not quite, but it would take a while. Luckily, there is a shorter way. Instead of working out and plotting all the points, we can join the points with a solid line. All the points on the line are the values for x and y that fit the rule we made. Sure, I was getting kind of worried there. 
If we are considering all the points on the line, then we must write down that x and y can be any real numbers. So we write x is an element of the set of real numbers and y is an element of the set of real numbers. Now remember, we got all these points on the line by using the rule multiply the number by 2 and subtract 3 from it. So this rule gives us the relationship between x and y as the answer of y is equal to any x value times 2 and then subtract 3. This means y equals 2x minus 3 is your formula for the straight line graph. Now that we have found the formula for this set of x and y values, there is one more thing we need to do. Now listen carefully because here's something really important. I can draw any straight line graph anywhere on the Cartesian plane. Here are some. And every single one of them can be described by a formula that looks like the one we just found. This one has a formula of y equals a half x plus 3. This one has a formula of y equals negative 2x minus 3. And this one has a formula of y equals negative a half x plus 3. That's pretty cool. The formulae all look similar. It seems that the only things that change each time are the numbers in front of the x and the numbers at the end. That's right. So we can say that all straight line graphs fit a formula or rule y equals ax plus q where each one has a specific value for a and a specific value for q. But I thought the formula for the straight line graph was y equals to mx plus c. You're right. This is just as correct as using y equals ax plus q. We can use any letters we want to. We have chosen to use a and q because this will help us later on when we compare straight line graphs with other types of graphs. Any formula that can be written in the form y equals ax plus q can be represented by a straight line graph. We call this family of graphs linear functions. Sure, that's quite a difficult name. Not really. Linear simply means in a straight line and a function is a type of rule that relates two variables to each other. Let's get back to our first graph, y equals 2x minus 3. It has an a value of 2 and a q value of negative 3. Remember that plus q can be a positive or a negative number. Now have a look at the graph again. Do you remember what gradient is? I think it has something to do with the slope of the graph. Yes, the gradient of a graph is a mathematical way to describe the slope or the steepness of a graph. How would you describe the slope of this graph? Well, the line kind of slopes. It goes up from left to right. That is a fair enough description. Let me show you how to measure how steep the slope is by finding the gradient of this graph. Imagine you are walking on the graph. You walk from this point, negative 1, negative 5, to this point, 1, negative 1. Walking up the slope, you have moved from negative 5 to negative 1 on the y-axis, that's 4 steps, and you moved from negative 1 to 1 on the x-axis, that's 2 steps. We calculate the gradient of the slope like this. You find how much you have moved on the y-axis, that's the change in y, and divide this by how much you have moved on the x-axis, that's the change in x. So here we get 4 and here we get 2. 4 divided by 2 gives us a gradient of 2. Good! Now, do you think you can find the gradients of these other graphs? 
Remember that the top number shows the change in Y and then the number at the bottom is the change in X. I get 1 over 2 for this one. So the gradient is a half. Good. Now the next one. Okay. On the x-axis, I move 1 to the right, but on the y-axis, I have to go down. Um, I'm not sure what to do when we go down. That just means you will need to use a negative 2 for the change in y. So that's a gradient of negative 2. Okay, I get it. This other graph will have a negative 1 over 2. So the gradient is negative a half. Yes, remember that we count a movement down the y-axis as negative and a movement to the left on the x-axis will also be negative. A movement up the y-axis is positive and a movement to the right on the x-axis is positive. Now have a look at these graphs again and see if you notice anything about the gradients. Hey, I can see what's going on over here. For each graph, the number in the formula is the same as the gradient we found. Well spotted there. That is a very useful observation. The a value, the coefficient of x in the formula y equals ax plus q, is always the gradient of the graph. It tells us about the steepness of the graph. Another way to find the gradient is to use the table of values. Have another look at the table that we worked with at the beginning of the lesson. The x changes by 2 at each step to the right while the y changes by 4. We can find the gradient by taking the amount that y changes and then divide by the amount that x changes. So we get 4 divided by 2 which is 2. The formula for this graph was y equals 2x minus 3. So a gradient of 2 is correct. We can write the formula for gradient like this. a is the change in y divided by the change in x. That's the same as saying y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So if we use the first two x and y values from the table, that's negative 1 minus negative 5, all divided by 1 minus negative 1. Be careful with your plus and minus signs here. We get an answer of 2, which is the gradient of the line. We will get the same gradient for the graph no matter which points we use. Does that mean that the steepness of the slope of the line is the same everywhere? Yes, the gradient between any two points should be exactly the same, no matter how close together or how far apart they are. This means that there is a constant gradient or rate of change on any linear graph. The change in the y values compared to the change in the x values stays the same for all points on the graph. Okay, so we have seen that A in the formula is the gradient, right? So what's Q in the formula? Does it also tell us something about the graph? Well, let's find out. The Q of this graph is negative 3. What does this tell us about the graph? Well, the graph cuts the y-axis at negative 3. So I reckon that the Q will be the same as the y-intercept. Let's check if you are right. If we look at our graph, its formula was y equals 2x minus 3. And yes, it cuts the y-axis at negative 3. We can check this another way as well. What are the coordinates of this intercept? You mean the x value and the y value. The x is 0 and the y is negative 3. Right. The x has to be 0 at the y-intercept. Now, if we put 0 into the formula, we get y equals 2 multiplied by 0 minus 3, which is negative 3. Cool. There are lots of ways to show us the same thing. Yes, it's one of the reasons I love maths. I think that about does it for today. 
Let's have another look at what we have learnt. First, we found that the formula of a straight line graph can be written in the form y equals ax plus q. Then we saw how we can draw the graph by plotting some of the points on the graph. We also saw that the gradient of a linear graph is constant and is given by the formula gradient is equal to the change in y divided by the change in x. We can work out the gradient from the table, from the graph, or from the formula. We also found that the y-intercept is the point 0, y, where the y-value is the same as the q-value in the formula. Now that we've learned a lot about linear functions, the only question that remains is, how can we fit the equation that we used throughout the video in with function notation? In function notation, we replace the variable y with f of x so that the equation of a linear function will read f of x is equal to ax plus q. Remember to try the task video at the end of this section. You'll also be able to learn more about functions on our website, www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Thank you for joining us, Great Tens.